another get ready with me makeup tutorial featuring this bold intense very green look which is kind of my ode to Mardi Gras and St. Patrick's Day because you know you have to pull out the greens and the purples for Mardi Gras right and then it ties perfectly in with St. Patrick's Day so I incorporated some new pigments that I picked up from Makeup Geek these are their foiled pigments and I picked up the entire set because I do like the pigments from Makeup Geek I think she makes some very interesting colors and I just had to use this bold green one this is the shade voodoo and it's what I am wearing on my lids and it's just bright and vivid and in your face and you know I love color so I had to play up the greens and then I pulled out a bold lip and I was gonna go a little bit brighter purple uh, shiny teeth eh. I had to pull out one of my liquid suede's from NYX this is a deep dark purple. It's the shade Foul Mouth. Wait a minute, what? <laughs> I didn't even realize that was the name of it. But it's the shade Foul Mouth. And I really love this deep purple. I think it's a really wearable purple because it's a deep purple. It's not really bright in your face or anything. Let me know what you think. It kind of tones down the look a little bit, if I do say so myself. And I also use some other new products. I'm trying out different things. I just try to incorporate as many different products as I can so you can see them in action and see me use them. So uh, without much further ado, if you want to see this St. Patrick's Day Mardi Gras inspired green look, then stay tuned and I'll talk to you soon. Hey there guys, so as usual I'm starting off with a clean freshly washed face and I'm going to go in with a bit of moisturizer. This is my B Nigma All-in-One Face Cream and I'm just going to massage this into my skin to hydrate my little dry tight spots. That happens around the winter time even though I have oily skin. Once I have that on, I'm going to fill in my brows and bam, all done. There is a link below for my brow tutorial in case you're curious. Then I'm going in with my eyeshadow primer. This is my Urban Decay Anti-Aging Primer Potion. Followed by my Naked Skin Complete Coverage Concealer in the shade Dark Neutral. And I'm applying that directly under my brows and then blending it out with my Anastasia Beverly Hills number 18 concealer brush. This is going to help to clean up the underside of my brows and help conceal any stray hairs as well as act as an eyeshadow base. And I'll just blend out the excess using my Real Techniques Deluxe Crease Brush. Next I'm going in with a secondary eyeshadow base. This is my Lane Low Paint Pot from MAC and I'll apply that all over my lids. This is going to help give our eyeshadow something to stick to as well as even out the eyelids so we have a nice even base. Now I'm going to add a transition color in my crease area. This is one of the ColourPop Press Shadows. It's the shade Locked and Loaded. And I'm blending that back and forth in my crease using Windshield Wiper Motions with my Eddie Funkhauser Large Crease Brush. Now I'm going to grab a second color. This one is Running Late, which is more of a warm toned mustard beige. And I'll buff that also in my crease. Since we're using greens for this look, I'm going in with a green shade. This shade is Checkmate. And again, just running that in my crease area. For the color on my lids, I'm going in with this Makeup Geek Foil Pigment in the shade Voodoo. And I'm pressing that all over the center of my lid using my Kat Von D Shade and Light Eyeshader Brush. Then I'll go around the edges of that color using my Anastasia Beverly Hills number A25 blending brush just to blend around the edges to make sure we don't have any harsh lines. Now I want to add some depth and dimension to the look so I'm grabbing this deep dark green shade from Colored Rain. It's the shade Gumby on a Sonia Kashuk large crease brush and I'm just going to apply this to the outer lid and outer V area making sure that I deposit enough of that color. As you can see it's a very intense deep green and then I will go around the edges with a shader brush. This is the Eddie Funkhauser eye shader brush. And I'm lightly touching the edges of that color so it fades into the crease area and doesn't leave behind that harsh line. Now I'm going back into the Makeup Geek pigment and I'm grabbing some of it on that same Eddie Funkhauser eyeshadow brush just to build up the pigmentation and really make it pop on that lid. As you can see, it's beautiful and bright and really, really vibrant. 
vibrant. Since everything is so bold and intense, I wanted to add a little bit more depth to that outer V area. So I'm grabbing another color pop eyeshadow. This is the shade Team Captain, which is a deep, dirty martini, like a dirty olive green shade. And I'm blending that in my crease area again, just using a clean blending brush because I want to add a little depth. And as you can see, it's a little bit darker on that outer V area now. I'm going to grab another one of the Makeup Geek foil pigments. This is the shade Abracadabra, and I'm grabbing it on a small blending brush from Hakuhodo and just popping that on the inner tear duct area to tie all the greens together. And then I'll just blend everything to make sure it's seamless. And for the highlight, I'm using another one of the ColourPop eyeshadows. This is still the shade Locked and Loaded, but I'm using it under my brows on a matte 252 brush. Now let's go ahead and work on the face. I'm grabbing some of my Urban Decay D Slick Complexion Primer. This is the mattifying type, and I'm really making sure that I press this into my skin. Otherwise, it can really cause my foundation to look crepey, so I make sure I really massage that into the skin. For the foundation, I am using the NYX Total Control Drop Foundation and I'm mixing two of the shades together. I'm mixing the shade Caramel and Sable and buffing that over my skin using my Marc Jacobs The Face 3 brush. And I find that I have to mix a couple of shades to get one that matches my skin. I haven't found a perfect shade match in this foundation, but I actually really like it and it glides over the skin really nicely and wears really well. I'm grabbing my Urban Decay Complete Coverage Concealer again. This is the shade Dark Neutral and just applying that under my eyes for my concealer. And I'm going to blend that out using my L'Oreal Contour Blender Sponge. I just love this sponge, I can't get over it. And of course I dampened it so it's extra large and it's really smooth and soft and really helps to blend out my concealer. So I just blended that out and then I'm going to set everything in place using my Urban Decay Ultimate Definition Powder Foundation in the shade Medium Dark Golden. And I'll just press that into my skin using my Tarte Powder Player Brush. And again, this foundation that I have on looks really beautiful with this powder on top of it. Now I'm going to work on my under eye area. So I'm grabbing another Colored Rain eyeshadow. This is the shade Forbidden. It's just a deep foresty green shade and I'm buffing that under my lower lash line area using a matte 242 brush and then I'm going in with the shade majestic which is that beautiful bright blue but it mixes in with this green and really intensifies it and makes it look a little bit bolder and a little bit more intense so I'm just buffing that in on both areas and then I'll blend out the edges using my blending brush from Chikuhodo just to make sure that it is nice and smoky and the line is not too harsh. Now I will go ahead and line my lower waterline using my Urban Decay 24-7 Glide On Pencil in the shade Perversion, which is just a deep, rich black shade. And this will add to the smokiness of that lower lash line and really pull the look together. And then for my mascara, I'm using this CoverGirl Plumpify Blast Pro Mascara, which has a huge brush. And I was really expecting a lot from this mascara because it's really pricey. It's one of the most expensive mascaras that CoverGirl has. And it was all on this display and I was so intrigued and it really did a whole lot of nothing. It's black, but that's about it. I didn't get any volume. I didn't get any length, really. It just was like any regular run-of-the-mill mascara. And to me, it's just not worth it. So if you were looking at trying this mascara out, I just don't think it's worth it. Now I'm going in with my L'Oreal Telescopic Carbon Black Mascara on my lower lash line area. I am still trying out this mascara to see if I like it. One of you guys let me know that you think this improves as it dries out. So I'm going to you know, keep using it until it gets to that perfect consistency. Now for my lashes, I'm using this Lash Couture collection from Kiss Cosmetics. This is the style Midnight, which is a huge full lash. And I love these lashes, guys. They are inexpensive at the drugstore and they mimic mink lashes so well. They're lightweight, they're soft, they're fluffy. They give you great fullness and they're not difficult to work with because even though the band is thicker, it's still very flexible and pliable. So I really love these lashes. Now since these lashes are so big and full, I do have to blend them well with my natural lashes. So I'm just pinching them together using my Shu Umora S Curler to really make them seamless. 
Then I'm going to grab one of my Stila Magnificent Metals Glitter and Glow Liquid Eyeshadows. This is the shade Gold Goddess. I'm going to pop that in my inner tear duct area. And I've been enjoying using these liquid metals for this purpose. Just pop a little bit of glitter right there on the inner tear duct. And it stays in place all day. You don't have to use a separate glitter glue at all. It does really last beautifully on that inner tear duct. Now let's go ahead and add some dimension back to our face. I'm grabbing my Multitask and Perfecting Powder from Becca. This is the shade Dark Golden and my Sonia Kashuk Contour Brush. And I'm just applying a little bit of dimension to the hollows of my cheeks. And I'm also applying some of that to the temples to, again, bring some shape and shadowing back to my skin. Now I'll go in with my blush. This is one of the Balm In Stain blushes. It's the shade Swiss Dot. And it's just a subdued peachy coral shade and I'm just popping that on my cheeks and buffing it in with one of my dual ended Tarte brushes. This blush is really beautiful. It just gives that perfect pop of coral on the cheeks. And for my highlight, I'm actually using this Becca powder that a lot of people have mixed feelings about. This is a soft light blurring powder. And on darker skin, it works beautifully as a highlight. It's a beautiful, soft, golden highlight. And I'm just buffing that over my skin using a small highlighting brush. And you can see, if you like subtle highlight powders, this will work really well for you because it just blends seamlessly into your skin. And you can build it up or blend it out. You can also dampen it and make it a little bit more intense. But it's perfect for me because I like very subtle highlight colors on my skin. Now we're going to do some lips. And for the lips, I am going to use this very deep vampy purple shade. It's one of the NYX Liquid Suede Cream Lipsticks. It's the shade Foul Mouth. And I didn't even realize the name was Foul Mouth until after. But it's a dirty, deep violet purple. It's a blue-based purple. And I'm just going to make sure that I layer it up so I get full opacity. And I really like the combination of green and purple. So that's why I pair the two together. All right guys, so that is going to complete the look. And if I'm honest, I don't really know how I feel about it because I don't really do green very often, especially as an all over green look. I typically use green as an accent. I don't know, I just don't jive with green. I mean, it's a pretty eye look. Maybe if I changed the lips up, it would look a little bit different, but I feel like the, I don't know, the whole combination is not necessarily my favorite, but I did enjoy working with the different products. And I will mention that the pigments from Makeup Geek, they have a little opening in the jar that's just a little hole that you dip your brush into. Now it's a very small opening, so it's hard to get the product out. And then when you get them out, they're actually in little clumpy balls and you have to kind of break up the balls and press them before you apply them to your lids because the balls will actually just flake off and fall off your lids and fall out the brush like I have it doesn't fall all over your face because they're literally little tiny balls they just roll off the brush into never never land and I was like what the hell is going on so you have to be careful to really press the, the pigment into your eyeshadow brush and they don't really break up easily so you have to press really hard so you have to use a synthetic brush or even a stiff natural hair brush but really press hard to break the pigments up before you apply them to your lids. And that's the first time I've encountered that with an eyeshadow. Like the balls just don't want to break apart. But apart from that, it applied beautifully, blended out beautifully, has nice color to it. So I really enjoyed it. And the ColourPop eyeshadows, you know, I like them. They're nice eyeshadows. They're decently priced. They have a nice shade range. They're a little powdery and to me they feel a little bit dry, like they're not necessarily creamy. I mean when you swatch them just with your fingers, with the moisture and the, the heat of your fingertips, they're going to feel a, a little bit smoother than they actually apply with a brush. So keep that in mind. When you apply them with a brush, they come off a little bit dry, like you can almost just dust them away. It's how they apply, but they do stick to a primer well and they do have great pigmentation. So it's... I would say they're worth checking out and they don't necessarily have like really crazy shades that you can't find anywhere else except for those peachy shades that they have like all right let me just show you really quickly like they have a ton of pinky peachy shades that I think you can create a nice peach palette like if you were looking into the Kylie peach kit peach palette whatever you can probably Find some similar shades here if you wanted to really go for a peach palette without going for the Kylie palette. 
So I do think they have some nice neutral, some nice pinky peachy shades, and some pops of color that you can get into. I don't think they necessarily have the most unique selection of shades, but they're worth checking out. Grab a couple of them. I did enjoy working with them. I prefer the Colored Rain eyeshadow formula though, because those are a little bit creamier, a little bit more smooth and buttery, not only with your fingers, but also with a brush. So I prefer the color rain, Colored Rain ones. I guess I like the ColourPop ones, but I'm not thoroughly impressed. Like, they wouldn't be my go-to eyeshadows to grab because of the powderiness. But I do like, like, the peachy tones. I definitely know I have peachy tones from ColourPop that I don't necessarily have in other brands. So I guess they do have a unique-ish selection. Yeah, I guess they do for, like, the peachy tones. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this Get Ready With Me video, picked up some tips and tricks. Hopefully you also discovered some products that you may be interested in trying out yourself. As usual, I will leave a full list of the products used down below in the description box along with my affiliate links to where you can pick them up. Now an affiliate link means if you make a purchase through that link, I do get a small commission. And that's how you can go ahead and support the channel. If you're not comfortable with that and you prefer to just buy it through your regular way of <laughs> purchasing things, either pick them up on the website or um, in store, feel free to do that. That. but if you do buy through my links thank you so much for your support I truly appreciate it and thank you guys so much for watching and I will talk to you soon bye